let me just introduce you to Captain Christina Brun and Captain Guy Holmes from Bristow, both based in Aberdeen. And they're going to come and talk to you about helicopter careers and helicopter training. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you very much for attending. Uh, I appreciate some of you may be here to talk about fixed wing or you're seeing various airlines, etc., uh, out in the main auditorium. We're here to speak to you about helicopters and to try and see if we can... Uh, give you some passion for flying rotary instead of fixed wing. So, as Ian said there, my name's Guy Holmes. I'm a flight operations manager with Bristow Helicopters based up in Aberdeen. We operate around the UK. I'm here to talk to you about Bristow, but also to talk to you about helicopters in general and why rotary might be the career for you. So what kind of roles are actually available in uh, helicopter flying? Well, unlike some of the careers that might be there in fixed wing, We've got a variety of different roles and careers available for you in rotary flying. That picture there sort of summarises part of it. So military, civilian, and sort of pseudo-civilian, as in police, HEMS, that sort of work. So first of all, we could go through the military route for uh, learning to fly. All three services, armed forces, operate helicopters in the UK. So you've got the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. A lot of people think if you're going to go and fly uh, rotary you, and you want to go and fly in the military, you want to join the RAF. But actually not true. The Navy and the Army both have significant numbers of helicopter pilots. And a lot of our ranks in, in the civilian world, offshore oil and gas, come through the military. What else do we have available for you? Well... Uh, a lot of my colleagues in police aviation, there are about 25 police helicopters based around the UK, uh, each of them operating with you know, four to six pilots on them, uh, not at one time obviously, but working back-to-back -back shifts, operating 24-hour coverage around the UK. So helicopter aviation has increased enormously in the last 20 years. We have some of our pilots uh, coming from the VIP operations operating offshore to yachts around the world. So nice work if you can get it. Uh, VIP flights here in the UK. You'd be surprised if you watch things like Flight Radar 24, how many helicopters are operating around the UK, particularly at the weekends, concerts, uh, race courses, motor racing, um, just taking executives from one place to another. There are helicopters flying all over the UK. Things like the Augusta 109 there, uh, often flying with two pilots, sometimes single pilot, fully IFR capable. And then, uh, that's a twin squirrel there, uh, heli-tele, uh, aviation filming. We do a lot of this with drones these days, but also a lot of it is done in sort of Hollywood and throughout sort of UK British TV with helicopters around the UK. Each of these pilots will have a commercial pilot's licence. But I'm going to push that unashamedly aside for one moment and talk about what we do at Bristow. So, Bristow Helicopters has been going since 1953. That's one of the aircraft we fly in Norwich. And we fly offshore scheduled passenger services, uh, sort of thing you'll fly from, say, Luton or Stansted, but we're flying it with helicopters from bases around the UK, taking oil personnel offshore. We've got three bases. We've got one up in the Shetland Isles, one at Aberdeen, one at Norwich. But we have other competitors in the market as well, so there are bases at Blackpool and Humberside in addition. We're fully IFR capable. You can imagine the North Sea being in the UK, we have to fly in all weather. So the same as EasyJet, Ryanair, all of our pilots have an instrument rating. We fly, I wouldn't say all weather, but pretty much we can fly in almost every day except the sort of the worst and most severe fog. We have a fleet of modern twin engine helicopters. All of our aircraft are twin, twin engine. Uh, so we meet the same safety standards that you'd expect from any commercial aviation. Multi-crew. A lot of people think we fly around with just single pilot, but we don't. We're captain and co-pilot. We fly two crew on all our oil and gas passenger services. And we have at Bristow over 100 pilots operating in the offshore industry. In the industry in total, this is just the Bristow number, there are about 500 pilots operating offshore passenger services every day. People kind of ask me, are there really offshore helicopter passenger services? the sort of thing you would see, as I say, out of a, a major London airport. But I can assure you there are. This is kind of a snapshot done by Nats, the uh, air traffic control people. 
flights over the UK. And we're coming up to about sort of five in the morning here, focusing on Aberdeen alone at the helicopter flights we have. You can see the oil and gas platform sitting about 120 miles offshore. And at seven o'clock in the morning, we suddenly come alive with these green aircraft. All these are helicopters operating back and forward. We have about four rotations every day. Each one's about three hours. So we'll be operating from seven in the morning right the way through to 10 o'clock at night. These are looking at the Aberdeen departures alone. So you see there's, sort of, if you're, those of you who are good at geography, up to the north there's the Shetland Isles. And you can see some of the green helicopters flying up there as well. So we'll fly direct from Aberdeen. The longest flight, about 250 miles. Uh, and then the aircraft will start taking off. There it is, coming back in for about sort of the airfield closing about 10.30 at night. All in all, we're operating somewhere around 70 round trip flights just from Aberdeen between the four helicopter companies. And those same services happening from Norwich and from Humberside, and there are also scheduled passenger services from Penzance to the Scilly Isles as well, operating about nine flights a day. So there's a lot of regular, standard, scheduled helicopter services operating commercial air transport on behalf of Bristow and on behalf of the other four companies that are doing the same sort of offshore operation. How do you become a pilot? It's, it's the same sort of service as you would require if you're going to become a fixed-wing pilot. You can do an integrated 12 months course. We're on a stand today with Heller Center, and you can get that sort of course there. Self-improvers, what we call um, uh, those doing the modular course, and military pilots. So you're looking at the same sort of flying time, 135 to 150 hours to get your commercial pilot's license. Once you've got a commercial pilot's license, you are qualified, and then you have to do your instrument rating to move into police HEMS or into the offshore industry, and that is the Augusta 109, the training helicopter we have at Heller Center. We then, as Bristow, we're looking at people coming out of those integrated courses, coming out of the modular courses, and we mix them in with military pilots leaving the AR, RAF and the Navy. We then give you your type conversion. So a type conversion alone is probably going to cost somewhere between 60 and 90,000 pounds sterling. We pay for that, and you're and you'll work for the company hopefully for about three years to pay that, that service back. So we do the type conversion, we do line training, and then you become a line pilot. That whole process is an 18-month process start to finish, all being well, subject to weather, etc. Certainly within two years, you'd expect it to have completed that whole course. We've got students that started with us at Heller Center about two years ago, and they're actually just recently qualified line pilots now having completed their line training. That photo is taken in the simulator at Aberdeen. Just hand you to Christina now, who can talk about life as a Bristow pilot. Hi, morning, everyone. So, Christina Brun, uh, chief pilot of Bristow Helicopters up in Aberdeen. Um, my passion for flying uh, ignited when I was about 10 years old, and ever since I took my first um, trial lesson, I was hooked on helicopters. Why helicopters? Um, you can do, you can move them around, the agility, the flexibility, it, you're always flying. So uh, I knew I wanted to fly professionally. And since 2008, I've been working for Bristow Helicopters, flying out to the North Sea. And I still, every day when I'm flying, I still fly. Yes, of course, we're flying highly automated two crew aircraft, but... I'm still flying, still manipulating that helicopter. And so from that moment when I was, you know, a 10-year-old girl where I thought helicopters, that's for me, to now, I'm still fulfilling my passion. And I think that's, that's, the, greatest, that's the greatest thing you could, you could do that you could ever ask for. So life at, at Bristow's, uh, as Guy mentioned, you know, we fly out to the oil rigs. They're typically sort of 30 minutes uh, out to an hour and a half. We fly two flights a day. Um, we're flying the latest aircraft. We're flying with fantastic colleagues. We're all like-minded, professional, highly trained. And it's, it's a fantastic career, a fantastic way to spend your day. Um, we fly about six to 700 hours uh, a year. Uh, we, we have an equal time roster, so not only do we have a fantastic time when we're at work, we actually only work half of the year, so what more could you, what more could you want? You get time to, to fly and, uh, and enjoy your work, but you also have time off 
to to enjoy yourself and um, you're home every night. Uh, and I think that's where we differ from uh, the fixed doing world is that um, we can fulfill our passion, we can enjoy work, we are flying the aircraft, but at the same time, we have a great life work balance where we're home every night. And next year, I know exactly what I'm doing. My roster is completely fixed. Um, so I know a lot of young people uh, go into fixed wing or flying because they want to see the world and they want to travel. Well, we can do both. Uh, we fly every day and we get to travel during our time off. Um, we have excellent training, 10 days of training every year. Uh, we have uh, simulators, full motion simulators, where we spend uh, those 10 days uh, training. And uh, we're supported by industry leading safety standards. So all in all, a fant fantastic balanced career, enjoyable, and um, we, uh, we have a fantastic roster that, that allows us to, to enjoy life as well, which is very important. So thank you very much, and back to, to Guy. Okay, thank you. So one thing I've spoken about there is passenger air transport, commercial air transport services around the UK. The other side of Bristow, about 50% of Bristow, is search and rescue. So a lot of people think search and rescue is done by the military, but it actually isn't. It's done by a commercial organisation on behalf of Her Majesty's Coast Guard. So it's one of our search and rescue aircraft. We have 10 bases equipped with 22 aircraft, so two on each base. Uh, and we have a additional aircraft for training. They use state-of-the-art SAR technology, so US military equipment, including night vision, uh, mission management computers. Each aircraft flies with a crew of four, so two pilots up the front, a winch man and a winch operator. Uh, we fly on behalf of the Coast Guard. This isn't a new thing. So Bristow have been flying military-style uh, Coast Guard search and rescue since 1971, so that's even older than I am. Uh, since that time, we've conducted over 31,000 missions and rescued over 19,000 people. So when you watch those TV programmes, uh, you know, helicopter rescue, rescue at sea, etc., you see those red and white helicopters around the UK, they're actually being flown by civilian commercial pilots provided by Bristow. Since 2013, we've been exclusively providing search and rescue, so the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy, who did it in conjunction with us, uh, are no longer providing SAR in the UK. So it's under one organisation, as I say, on behalf of Her Majesty's Coast Guard. There are uh, 10 bases dotted around the UK. Those larger circles there are the larger aircraft, the S-92, and that shows the range from them. So we have them up in the Scottish Highlands, up in the islands, uh, and down at Newquay to work out into the uh, Atlantic. And then five bases for the 189, the slightly smaller aircraft. We operate on the south coast, operating the, the very busy shipping lanes of the Channel but also up at Presswick and Inverness in the Highlands and out of Wales. Uh, on each base, we have nine pilots, quite often ten pilots. As I say, we have technical crew as well, winch operators and winch engineers that are actually doing the frontline work, and engineers, ten engineers on each base. Two aircraft, as I say, have the same type, so the crew won't fly two different types of aircraft. We'll have the same aircraft type on each base. A quick video here just to show you just a snapshot of search and rescue, the sort of missions. And this is where we say, Christine and I, you can have the most interesting career. You're looking for a 40-year career in aviation. And we hope with, uh, with Bristow and with helicopters, we can provide you that variety and type of career. So a quick video here showing search and rescue operations. This is our 189 operating on the south coast. 189 here, uh, 92 during an actual rescue operation. This was taken from the TV. But we can do all sorts of random things. We're not just offshore. This helicopter is operating in the middle of York, on the top of York Minster, uh, taking a casualty off the roof there. So we'll, we'll be operating onshore, road accidents. We'll be landing on motorways, uh, as well as offshore for the fishing industry and the oil and gas industry. And you can see, it's risky work. It's, you know, the winter and paramedics doing a fantastic job. Uh, and our crew flying them out there, making sure the entire team stays safe. I'm rescuing this crew here just moments before the ship went underwater. So you can see, hopefully, helicopters and rotary can provide a career that you're just not going to be able to achieve in any other style of aviation. 
But what industry is facing? You know, what are the problems we've got? Why are we here? Why are we asking you guys to be here? And it's kind of symbolized by this graph. This graph comes from the CAA. It's complicated, so I'll give you a little bit of time to digest it. But this is the age of helicopter pilots holding a commercial or an ATPL, an airline transport pilot's license. This is three years ago in 2018. So we've actually got to move on. I can't get a more recent statistic. But the first thing you can see is the graph is quite biased to the right-hand side. What that means is there's a lot of older pilots like me, but not so many younger pilots like you coming through. I can operate and I can continue flying until I'm 65. So that's the right-hand side of the graph. There. In fact, those first three columns have already gone because we're three years later. But what we can say is there are more pilots due to retire in the next nine years than there are in the next, coming through in the last 20. So what we need are those columns on the left-hand side to match the ones on the right if we're going to maintain and support our pilot industry. There are less pilots joining. So since Brexit, we don't have the, the same workforce from Europe. And this is a significant concern for us. We used to have a lot of European pilots. They're still licensed to fly in the UK, you know, but uh, we have less. Them, a lot of them have headed back to the European mainland. And also the military. Whilst we talked at the, at the beginning about the military, that can be a career into aviation. It can be a source of training. But you're probably not going to actually touch a helicopter for you know, a number of years. You, you're, you're trained as a military officer, then you're taught to fly. So we get very few pilots now coming through the military like we used to when I joined the company. And in terms of you guys, there aren't many people that are trained during the pandemic years. So the training has definitely slowed down. We're seeing less pilots coming through. We need to replace the pilots that are leaving industry, and we're, we're hoping to encourage new pilots into the industry. That's where we, we need you guys. OK, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. We're on a stand here with Hellas Centre of the Training Organisation, but we've got three members of staff, Christina, myself, and Lorraine from our HR team, here from Bristow, and we'd really recommend you to come along, speak to us, and have a chat and learn about the industry. OK, thanks very much. Thank you very much. That was a fascinating presentation. And also, is it, it's surprising how many people... One of the things we advise people to do is if you're considering a commercial aviation career, do as much research as you possibly can. And that doesn't just mean which school should I go to, but it means what is the actual job? What, you know, I wanna, uh, the, there's a lot of people who come through and go, I want to be an airline pilot. And you go, well, do you, do you know exactly what that entails? Have you researched? Is, are you sure that's what you want to do? There is more to commercial aviation than, than being an airline pilot, and that's right for some people and not right for other people. So this is a great insight into another big opportunity of a kind of world that most of us don't really see because not many people go on holiday to the North Sea oil rigs. Um, I've never been. Um, I can't imagine I, I would. It. Yeah. Is it, <laughs> can the food you, is excellent. The food is that you have to put your towel out first. <laughs> Um, anyway, so do your research properly um, and, and think about all the different potential careers that there are and feel free to go and uh, ask these lovely people on the stand uh, afterwards. And don't forget, have a go at the Neuro Tracker. I think they may even have a go themselves at some point. So uh, I'm not sure if we're ready to hand over to Karen Bath, who's in the hall uh, talking to FTA or not, but if not, we'll have a little holding screen until Karen is ready. So thanks very much. See you later. <laughs>